All right, everybody, it's um, Matthijs Beckers here, the nuclear humanist. I'm sorry for all the glare in the background. Um, I'm uh, doing all, all sorts of new stuff. Um, today, I want to talk to you about the Green New Deal. Now, before you, you see the draft text for the proposed addendum to House rules for the 116th Congress of the United States. Now, what they are planning to do is they want to create a committee for a Green New Deal, which is basically a House committee that puts forward legislation and maintains track of the progress of the um, legislation that they are putting forward and whether money is being spent in the right way and whether, you know, targets are being uh, met. So this is basically the Green New Deal as proposed by these... Uh, it's the... Uh, I forget her name, uh, Ocasio-Cortez and uh, a couple of other people. Now, Ocasio-Cortez is obviously a shooting star. She's uh, rising quickly in uh, popularity. And uh, that's because that, that's obviously, uh, you know, you can see that from all the attention that she's getting, even for a junior uh, House member. So, yeah. Um now, I'm not going to run through the entire thing. Um, important to note is that they are uh, the scope of the plan for the Green New Deal and the draft legislation. The plan for a Green New Deal shall be developed with the objective of reaching the following outcomes within the target window of 10 years from the start of execution of the plan. Now, <laughs> you see me laughing. I mean... I've done this ad nauseum already. Um, dramatically expand existing renewable power sources and deploy new production cap capacity with the goal of meeting 100% of natural, natural power demand through renewable sources. Now that's uh, a tall order. I'm not going to do the, uh, the whole... Uh, uh, calculations this time I mean it should be abundantly clear but this is um, te technically an, an, an almost impossible it's technically almost impossible to do within 10 years doing 100% of the power demand with renewables is almost impossible next building a national energy efficient smart grid third upgrading every residential and industrial building for state-of-the-art energy efficiency, comfort, and safety. Four, uh, eliminating greenhouse gas emissions from the manufacturing, agricultural, and other industries, including by investing in local state agriculture in communities across the country. Then five, eliminating greenhouse gas emissions from repairing and improving transportation and other infrastructure and upgrading water infrastructure to ensure universal access to clean water. Six, funding massive investment in the drawdown of greenhouse gases. And seven, making green technology, quote unquote, industry, expertise, products and services a major export of the United States with the aim of becoming the undisputed international leader in helping other community countries transition to completely greenhouse gas neutral economies and bringing about a global green new deal now this is all of this is is not necessarily bad i think i think most of it is pretty good um what they should do is amend the first one and just amend it saying we don't want 100 percent renewable sources we want 100 percent low carbon sources and if you do that you can include nuclear uh, on the regional level state level uh, federal level and it's all within the confines of what this uh, green new deal committee is supposed to do so far none of this is too crazy in my eyes obviously if you look at uh, number six funding massive investment in the drawdown of greenhouse gases that you know this this whole thing is will be considered 
too, too progressive by many. I mean, in, in a lot of ways, this this is a pretty uh, pr pretty state uh, and country driven agenda. Now, um, so I'm not I'm not I'm not I'm not against this. I'm not against this. I think that it should be tried, but here's here's my reservation. So in order to provide some more clarity, first we're going to this uh, you know this web page, the Green New Deal explained. It's by Vox. I'm not 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 particularly a fan of David Roberts, even though he's I believe he's a fan sitter on nuclear energy. Uh, it's a nice, uh, you know, nice pamphlet, dear Democrats, step up or step aside. And, um, yeah, basically we get the, the whole rundown. This is the Green New Deal. The concept isn't new. Um, comes to Washington. Let's see. Thank you. Dem leadership gives activists the stiff arm. So, for instance, the um, more centrist bunch in the democratic party and that's a large contingent they say well listen uh, there's all kinds of stuff we can do but let's not try to go overboard with all the political you know because what, what you see is they are trying to incorporate a lot of stuff in this green new deal that 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 might end up poisoning the well and which a lot of people won't be capable of supporting, wh whether it is because they are, um, you know, because it's opposed to their own uh, vested interest or because of other things, because they they are trying to get nuclear out. I don't know. But in, in any case, so um, the Green New Deal, so far it looks like it's going to be a 100% renewable 100% electrification of the United States while simultaneously uh, trying to help people get educated, uh, move into the supposed green infrastructure business, green energy business. And, you know, there's not a lot wrong with that, but it's too single-minded. I mean, electrification of everything is going to be a very, very big problem. Now, you can see a uh, a bluebird electric school bus right here that's a cool idea i'm, I'm, I'm absolutely a fit in favor of electrifying all school buses in the u.s but try to electrify uh transportation like uh, goods for instance that's going to be a a, a problem of a, of a completely different magnitude try to you know uh electrify all airplane travel and I mean, not just for persons, but do remember that air freight is a real thing. If you want your mail to be delivered uh, promptly, you, you, you're you going, going to need air travel, air freight. So, you know, there's going to be a lot of things that is saying you want to electrify everything is a lot, lot more problematic than you think. I mean look at just the sheer volume of aluminium and copper involved um i mean in the a lot of industrial processes uh, run on chemical uh you know are are chemically driven which is normally something which requires high pressure or a lot of heat and that heat usually comes from gas so yeah uh, i don't think this is a particularly good idea um Here's one fight the Green New Deal should avoid for now, David Roberts says. And he basically, um, at one point, he, he points to, let's see, where is he? He points to, or is it in here? Oh, yeah, it's in here. Jesse Jenkins uh, saying, finding feasible and cost-effective paths to carbon-free grid is as important as ever for guidance. And him and another people and a couple of other people reviewed uh, 40 academic studies charting course to decarbonize power system and synthesized findings in a paper just published in the journal Jewel. And, and I am pretty sure that he would 
he he would be very very tentative if you would ask him whether a 100% renewable uh, power infrastructure would be possible at all. I think he is pretty certain that uh, nuclear has to be a part of the solution. And he, he would probably also say carbon storage and those kind of carbon cap carbon capture and storage and those kinds of things. So if anything, look up Jesse Jenkins on Twitter and follow him because he actually knows what he's talking about. He is he's like 10 times smarter when it comes to energy than I am. And I, I consider myself medium level when energy is concerned. He is at the top. He is straight at the top. So um yeah the funny thing is here is a a green new deal letter to congress um and i'm going to read some of it so dear representative on, on behalf of our millions of members and supporters we are writing today to urge you to consider the following principles as the 116th congress debates climate change and legislation uh, climate change legislation and momentum around the country builds for a green new deal as the intergovernmental panel on climate change recently warned if we keep okay this is all pretty 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 uh, straightforward uh, we must reverse recent legislation that ended the 40-year ban on the export of crude oil and the export of all other fossil fuels and overhaul relevant statutes that govern fossil fuel extraction in order to pursue a managed decline of fossil fuel production further the federal government must immediately end the massive irrational subsidies and other financial support that fossil fuel and other dirty energy companies such as nuclear waste incineration and biomass industry continue to receive both domestically and overseas so this here is a pretty strong push to eradicate the uh, support for nuclear. And there's about 650 uh, people or groups that uh, underline this. 600, yeah, about 600. So among which are 350.org uh, chapters, as you can see here. Um, so yeah. This is pretty bad. I mean, um, this is a problem of a huge magnitude. This means that there's 600 organizations with millions of people behind them that are pushing for the end of nuclear power and are throwing nuclear power on the same heap with biomass, uh, large-scale hydro waste to energy technologies, and uh, fossil fuel companies. Which is crazy. I mean, this is this is just crazy. And even the Bulletin of Atomic Scientists, which is basically, um, uh, if I'm not mistaken, this is part of the Union of Concerned Scientists, and these people are generally against, you know, proliferation. They they are very very concerned about proliferation issues and therefore raise a lot of questions regarding nuclear power. But the these people say, listen, we cannot we cannot uh, we cannot make uh, a, a transition to low carbon economy without without uh, without nuclear power. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave these uh, links in the description below so that you can read them for yourselves. I think that is very important. Uh, one thing that I want to address right now is the problem of being too partisan. So if you look at, you know, in the United States, you have this pendulum that swings. And the more centrist your legislation is, the more... Uh, the bigger the chance is that it will survive the next administration or perhaps the next administration after that. What you see with uh, hyper-partisan legislation, like, for instance, Obamacare. I'm not saying that it is, in my eyes, it's 
pretty good. I mean, giving everybody health care is a must. You cannot have people going bankrupt over medical bills, but that's a whole different different problem. Um, we can debate the implementation of Obamacare, whatever. In the eyes of the Republicans, it's hyper-partisan. Obamacare was hyper-partisan. And that's why they have tried to dismantle it as good as possible. Now, this Green New Deal, the way it is being proposed with the support of the anti-nuclear people behind it, seems to me to be a dangerous development. It seems to move towards the hyper-partisan bit of the uh, spectrum. So, of course, once you add climate change to the uh, to to the premise you already are moving left in terms of politics in, in in the united states for some reason the gop has uh arrived at some point that they don't accept the science behind climate change there are outliers some of them do but once you include climate change you will be moving to the left and people on the right are going to fight you and not only fight you but once you establish this this committee and this legislation they will try to do their utmost best to undermine whatever you're going to put forward so here's what i've got to say about the green new deal i think that it will be thrown out with the dishwater sooner or later I mean, I understand that the Democrats now are in a positive flow and they think that they can somehow gain the upper hand, which, which will help them to put this legislation in place. But remember, the pendulum keeps swinging in the United States. So if I, if purely considering the issues of energy, I would opt for a centrist leader, people who are still left-leaning. I mean, I personally are more progressive than conservative. Um, I would say I would like to see a Democrat because I think that the because I think that the Democrats will, you know, take over in you know if it if not in 2020 then perhaps in 2024 at one point the democrats are going to take over the pendulum will keep swinging it's that simple and the united states you know it it, it doesn't it, it doesn't happen that quickly anymore did you get three or four terms of one party uh power in power it's not going to happen the pendulum will swing so what we need is a more centrist ap approach to power to power production power consumption um looking for ways to decarbonize and everybody knows that i am a, a strong supporter for nuclear power i'm not opposed to renewables um for the simple reason that i cannot convince enough people that nuclear alone will do it um most people you know some people will say well it's immoral to be in support of renewables i don't say i, I i'm i'm tentative i accept them as as a technology that should be a part of the solution we need centrist democrats who are um, pro nuclear and i believe i have seen a couple of candidates who fit that bill now, I believe Cory Booker or Cory Brooker from New Jersey is one. I mean, my friends are writing about them. And uh, generally, this means that if they write about them and they know these politicians much better than I do, that he, he has been overtly uh, pro-nuclear in his state. And that's something we need. I don't know whether he is whether he leans severely to the left or slightly to the left and is more of a moderate in between um, in any case we need people to reach across the aisle and say listen um, we need to do something about pollution we need to do something about water uh, safety we need to do something about jobs etc etc and we think that nuclear is integral to all that and um yeah, as long as there's parties, I don't know who wrote this, by the way, 
Um, is it the first one here on here? Community Voice, Louisiana. Now, this is just an alphabetical order. So I don't know. The United. In any case, with these kinds of letters going out and with this um, Ocasio Cortez uh, person uh, trying to, to write in 100% renewable stuff in her document, like, uh, like can be seen here. I think that's a dangerous uh, development. I think that we should steer clear from 100% renewable and should amend this into 100% low carbon. And, uh, we mustn't, we mustn't, uh, allow these people to say that nuclear is dirty you know or other dirty energy companies such as nuclear i mean um this this conveys a fundamental misunderstanding about the technology and it's bad and we we have to educate the people who are in this list that they are endorsing something that is incorrect it is incorrect nuclear is not dirty Anybody who says so has no understanding about the technology. Anybody who says, well, it's uranium mining and uranium mining is dirty. I, I would love to take them to a cobalt mine in the Congo, or I would love to take them to a lithium mine in Peru, um, or copper mine or whatever. I mean, and these problems are magnitudes of order bigger than uranium or thorium mining. So there's that. Just to finish off, um, I am uh, uh, also now doing some other stuff. I'm still writing new uh, blog posts and, and, and such, but I also have a gaming channel just because I need to blow off some steam sometime and I really would like you to go over there and uh, subscribe because, you know, um, it's a passion of mine and I need to do things that I'm passionate about. This is the only thing I do, you know, write about nuclear energy, create uh, 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 documentaries about nuclear, trying to help you understand what is happening. But I also need to blow some steam from now every now and then. So, yeah, I'm trying to build a second channel. And also, and this is this is this might be interesting. I'm going to plan a giveaway in the coming months. I'm going to give away books. I'm going to give away other stuff. Um, so please keep an eye out on the channel. I promise. I will promise that I will try to make some more videos. But that's obviously in my case uh, a, a health issue because. I have been depressed for almost 18 years now and I'm on medication so sometimes it's simply not possible to do so this video trying to make this video has given me a lot of energy and uh, I really hope that you stuck around to uh, see the end in any case thank you all for watching all the links are in the description below and have a nice day bye bye